Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Mountains and Me, an original story written for you by Daniel Hines and performed for you by Sarah Martin. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Mountains and Me Marie got up early, showered and changed, and prepared to conquer a mountain. To the top, she said to her own determined face in the mirror. She marched down the carpeted wooden stairs into the kitchen and found her mom making French toast for her little brother. You're up early, mom said, cracking another egg. Can I interest you in some French toast? Maybe some scrambled or an omelet? Marie smiled back at her mom and held up one foot as an answer. She was wearing her heavy purple and brown hiking boots, scuffed and worn soft by countless climbs. Oh, I see your beeline today. My apologies, Mom said with a smile. There's peanut butter in the cupboard and granola bars are by the sink. Marie, beeline, nodded and started to rummage around. A not-so-well-kept secret among the longtime hikers is that, sooner or later, you get a trail name. You can pick it yourself, but most people wait until other hikers name them after some event on the trail. Marie had gotten her trail name from some hikers passing through near Mount Washington. They were working on doing the whole Appalachian Trail, which went for 2,000 miles along the east coast of the USA. They fell in with Marie while she was hiking hard for the top of a small mountain that happened to be on their route. She had peppered them with questions about the trail, and she told them she planned on hiking it as soon as she was old enough. In the meantime, she was climbing all the mountains near her home in New Hampshire. They had answered her questions patiently enough, but when they stopped for the third time to sit by a river and have a snack, Marie told them she was keeping on. Making a beeline for the top, huh? One had asked her. And when she nodded, they all started calling her beeline and wished her the best. And this morning, Marie was tucked away and beeline was getting ready. She was going to tackle one of the hardest peaks in the area. It was easy near the bottom, a path she regularly hiked with her family. But up top, it was a different story. It got narrow and steep, and in some places you even had to go hand over hand like a real rock climber. Beeline had made a sandwich and grabbed a few granola bars and stowed them in her backpack. She also had water and bear spray and her emergency foam, plus a jacket and a few other necessities. It was a warm spring day, but on top of the mountain it would still have the icy teeth of winter's muzzle and a frosting of clean white snow spread over the ground. I still don't get why you want to do this every weekend, Mom said as Beeline finished packing her bag. Why do you think? Beeline asked, honestly curious. Mom tapped her chin, flipping a piece of French toast in the pan. Well, if I had to guess, it's the nature, right? quiet and beautiful, and I bet you see all kinds of spring flowers and trees and animals waking up all sleepy from hibernation. Is that right? That's right, Beeline said with a smile, but it wasn't quite. The nature was nice. The quiet was nice too, especially when her brother was feeling rambunctious and tearing around the house. But no, that wasn't the reason she loved to hike mountains. But It was an easy answer for her mom to understand, so she went with it. Okay, well have fun and be careful, mom said. I'll be with the group, Beeline said. See you tonight. The group was Marie's Beeline's hiker group. They were led by a woman named Aggie, an old friend of her dad's. Most of the group were older and didn't talk much, but that's the way Beeline liked it. She climbed just ahead or just behind them for safety in numbers, but on the trail, she was in her own little world. A horn honked out front and Beeline gave her mom a kiss, ruffled her brother's hair, and then grabbed her pack on the way out the door. Out front, Aggie's van sat idling and knocking in the clear, warming air. Come on, kiddo, Aggie shouted. We want to get up and down by dark. Let's go, Beeline said throwing her pack in the back and climbing in after it. They picked up a couple other people, then they all spilled out at the trailhead. It was warm and quiet among the trees. The ocean roar of traffic and the bustle of city life seemed to fall away. 
Mom had been right. It was quiet and lovely and the nature. She could see birds chasing each other, tittering from tree to tree, squirrels stealing nuts, and blossoms bobbing on the breeze. It was beautiful, but it wasn't the reason she climbed. All right, called Aggie when everyone was ready and wearing their bags. Let's get going. They started up the trail. Beeline got out ahead, she had earned her name after all, and followed the wide, root-gnarled path that wound through the trees and up the mountain. The smell was rich mud and sharp pine and wet leaves and sun-warmed stone. A deep breath filled her lungs and more, filled her body with the clean air of the mountain. Step by step, a smile on her face, she climbed. An hour or two later, Aggie called a stop for a ten-minute rest to gather the group again. Beeline rested on a log, drinking from her camelback, and eating half a granola bar. While she did, an old climber with skin weathered as his walking stick took a seat beside her. Hambone, she remembered after a second. They called him Hambone. Nice day for a climb, Hambone said. Up close, she could see he was even older than she'd thought. There were deep, jumbled lines in the skin around his eyes like bird nests. Your beeline, right? Just wanted to say hello. Hey, and your hambone, she asked. That's right, he said. So what brings you here climbing mountains? You looking to get some exercise? Yeah, Beeline said. Just a nice place to work out. Hambo nodded and then fell back as they started hiking again. It was good exercise. As the trail got steeper, she felt a burn in her legs and she knew that she would be sore tomorrow. She had been lying to Hambone, though. The exercise was like the nature. It was nice but it wasn't why she climbed, not even close. A little while later, the path turned up the mountain in a steep and twisting snake of a trail. Half the group started back down with Hambone in the lead. The other half, led by Aggie, continued on toward the summit. The trail grew rocky and steep. They walked on the thin ledges with brittle shale to their left and open air to their right. The trees grew thinner and further apart the air an icy bite and wind sharp as fangs. A couple more climbers in the group decided to turn back, but Beeline had her eyes forward, on the summit that loomed high ahead but strangely close, like she could reach out and pluck it up with her hands. After they had to scramble over a series of jagged rocks nearly big enough to be called boulders, a couple more people turned back, and Aggie called another break before the final ascent to the mountain peak. It was a hard trail, steep enough in places that you'd have to use your hands to go up on all fours like a real climber. Beeline was ready. You look excited, said a woman next to her, the group called Shutterbug, or Bug for short. She was wearing a furry button-up parka and lopsided hat. Her camera, the one that had earned her her trail name, was slung around her neck like always. First time to the top? Yeah said Beeline. I can't wait. I can tell, said Bug. You're like me. You want to look down on the world from way up top and see everything all spread out below you, tiny and fun, like one big toy set. The view, said Bug, patting her camera. That's why I got into photography. The views out here are so amazing. You can't do them justice with words. Heck, even the pictures barely get it. To really understand, you need to stand at the top and see for yourself. Am I right? You're right, said Beeline with a smile. Lots of awesome things. Lots of beautiful things in the wild. Right on, said Bug. See you at the top. Beeline nodded, but she privately thought that Bug was wrong. The view from way up in the mountains was amazing, but that wasn't why she climbed. It's getting rough, called Aggie at the five or so of the group who remained. Anyone who wants to make the summit, we're going now. Jackets on. She winked at Beeline and they started up. The wind howled like a lonely animal. It bit and pulled at her clothes, 
as the trail grew steeper and steeper. Soon Beeline found herself holding on with her hands as the rock rose nearly straight in front of her. She followed Aggie, placing each foot, testing to make sure it can hold her weight, reaching up for a handhold of a crooked rock, pulling herself up again and again and again. She grabbed another rock high above, and it pulled free with the frosty stone like a baby tooth, leaving a dark socket of earth behind. It fell, and Beeline started to fall with it. Whoa! she shouted, more noise than a word. She reached up wildly and caught another stone. Her sliding fall stopped, but her knee bashed painfully into a jutting stone below. She cried out and shook her leg, holding on tightly with her hands. Beeline! Marie! called Aggie. Are you okay? Do you need help? The pain was beating a steady, but um bum drumbeat in her knee, but Beeline shook her head. I'm good, she said, and she was, luckily. The pain was subsiding, and her leg was moving fine. Let's finish this. Aggie and the others cheered, and they resumed the climb. It got harder as they neared the top. Aggie knew the best path, but still, it was cold and hard and in places slick with ice. Beeline pulled herself foot by foot, slow and steady, her knees screaming and her hands aching, and just when she thought she couldn't climb another foot, she looked up again and saw that she was at the top of the mountain. She had made it to the top. There was a small flat area, and still huffing and puffing, she stood with Aggie and the others there, looking out at the great misty bowl of the valley below. It seemed to Beeline like they stood at the top of the world, and from up there, everything, her school, her problems, all of it, seemed so small. What was homework when she had climbed a mountain? What could possibly stop her? What could stand in her way? And that, Beeline thought to herself as she stood on that lofty peak, that is why I climb. Not for nature or exercise or the view, but to test myself against the mountain. To test myself and to know that I'm up to the challenge. To know that I'm up to any challenge at all. A smile on her face and pride warming her chest, Beeline turned and started back down the trail towards home. The End Thanks for listening! 